Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. There's nothing like an environmental film, is there? That is to say, there's nothing more preachy, annoying, or obnoxiously pretentious as an environmental film, is there? Of course there isn't. And that's why I'm taking a look at 20th Century Fox's latest animation fuck-up since... Well, anything their animation studio has produced, really. Ferngully, The Last Rainforest. And boy, have I got some words to say about- Hey! What? What was that? That was me, you plagiarist! Nostalgia chick? What the hell do you want? You can't make fun of Ferngully? I was gonna make fun of that! Hey, too bad, chick! I got dibs! <laughs> you don't have the brain power to understand the level of bullshit this movie amounts to. Why? I put up with it from your end every couple of weeks. Say that again. Oh, you mean what I just said about you constantly spewing bullshit every time you speak? Certainly. <clears throat> Uh, I, that's me, the person right in front of you, uh, put up, that's a direction, with it, that being your bullshit, from your end, I, uh, not even gonna go there, every couple of weeks, that is a period of time. Is that slow enough for you? Well, why don't you come over here and say that face to face to me, big shot? I got a better idea. Why don't you come up here and make me say it to your face? Go ahead, try it. You don't have to. <laughs> god-awful movie that deserves to be ripped a new one. What do you say? Truth? Truth. So the film begins, as most epics do, with a flashback. Bastard. Bitch. <laughs> they tell us that Ferngully used to be a peaceful forest of waving hands, where everybody was happy and peaceful all the time. <sighs> Need any help there? Yes. Good. But then the plot device known as Hexus arrived, an evil spirit who wanted to spread chaos all over the land. But then an alliance of men and elves marched against the armies of Hexus, putting that bunghole in his place. Uh, wrong movie. Oh. Instead, they used some sort of wing magic bullshit that helped defeat the evil Hexus and bring life back to Ferngully. And one of those examples of life is Tinkerbell's slutty sister here, Krista. Krista, what a charming name. It's like the name a wasp family would give their child to make them sound unique. You mean like Ferngully? Yeah. yeah. So she spends most of her time flying around with other fairies while listening to bad late 80s, early 90s music. Which you'd ironically hear in the Rainforest Cafe. Are all rainforests filled with Phil Collins wannabes? All except Tarzan. They were unfortunate enough to get the real Phil Collins. Oh, who goes there? Hi, Krista. Okay, what's the password? Welcome to hell. Don't eat shrimps. Oh, come on, you guys. Is that the password? It sounds good. Bye. Bye. That's it. That's a password. Well, I don't know if that's a password or not. I'm so confused. I'm annoyed. Don't worry, we don't see him again. Good. So she visits a mystical something or other named Maggi, who kind of looks like Yoda's senile German grandmother. I don't know. It looked like a, a strange black cloud rising out of the earth. Smoke, I should think. What smoke? Gee, is this that naive and dangerous of all animals known as... Man? She shows Krista that if trouble does come in Bruin, that the secret to all growth isn't water, light, or the ability to create your own food, it's magic. But wait a minute, what about photosynthesis? Magic. What about the science that goes magic. behind... What about the years of research that... Magic, damn you! Oh! Don't you ever try to bring logic into this movie again! This is Ferngully, bitch! And speaking of impending danger, Robin Williams is in this movie too, playing a fruit bat named Batty. Which is another weird name, isn't that kind of like calling a human human-y? He's a little out of it because his mind was altered by evil scientific experiments that makes comic relief much more annoying than they need to be. A primary testing laboratory- No! Pass the probe. <laughs> Graduate students all gather for- No! I'm annoyed again. We all are. I just blew in from a biology lab. I'm back and I'm flapping free. I'm a nocturnal placental flying mammal. A member of the family of Pterodidae, or Pterodidna. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm a bat! <laughs> yes, I am. And they used to call me Batty. Batty Coda. Nice to meet you. Bonjour. <laughs> you know how Robin Williams is both funny and annoying? 
It's like they took away the funny, just replaced it with more annoying. Well, it's not like he could get any more annoying. Yo, the name is Patrick. The logic is erratic. Oh, he rats. <laughs> yeah, you review it. Uh -huh. No, you review it. 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 So yeah, listening to Robin Williams rap is kind of like listening to Eminem, sung by Eminem's while taking part in s &M. Annoying, bad for you, and incredibly painful. So Betty says he spotted humans at Mount Warning, which is, wait a minute, Mount Warning? Isn't that in Australia? Yeah. Is there rainforest in any kind of danger? Yeah. Why is it called the last rainforest? Well, Mr. Critic. One must ask oneself, where is a viable rainforest environment that happens to have a ready supply of white people? Central America? No. Africa? Hear it. New Guinea? Getting warmer. Oh, Australia! Now you got it. Technically, they could have just made up a location, but I guess the movie wanted some credibility. Now, you could say that it's not a great idea to try to impose logic on an environmentalist film about fairies. But hey, it's for kids, and kids are stupid enough to buy anything. Now I know! And knowing is half the battle. So Krista follows Betty to where he spotted the humans. Yeah, this territory looks kind of familiar. <laughs> Come on, you got a great set of wings. And that's not the only thing you got a great set of. Oh! Oh, oh come on, why do you think he's flying behind her? So we come across a blonde mullet youth named Zack, who's helping other Australians with no accents chop down the trees of their beloved rainforest. Faster than you can say, it's not the size that counts. Zack is shrunken down to the size of a fairy. A human! A tree! What is with this running blindness gag? He's a fruit bat. Fruit bats aren't blind. <laughs> While he's passed out unconscious, the little mugger in Krista rummages through his pockets to see what she can find. Hmm, maybe I can cut off this root in his crotch area. Take anything you want, I won't tell the cops. Trust me, I'm not gonna tell you when I was mugged by a fairy. Check this out. Huh? I have a basic inclination. Oh, I'm sorry, we seem to have entered into a completely different movie. I just can't control this hardware. On my ravenous consumption, you're a welcome little snack. If I'm gonna eat somebody, it might as well be you. Uh -oh. I can see you as a sandwich or a strange exotic stew. I mean, I... What is this character? He just comes out of nowhere singing this kind of sexual song about how he's gonna eat Zack. I mean, what's the point? Oh, it's a big-lipped alligator moment. Big 